Hello and welcome to uh, my video about repairing Amiga 1 computers. I have uh, had some issues with my Amiga 1 motherboard uh, a year ago. Uh, suddenly the image uh, from, the, from the graphics board just uh, disappeared. The computer was still on and fully functional but there was no image on it and I tried uh, replacing the, the graphics board with another one and it was unsuccessful and uh, tried even uh, exchanging the power supply with a brand new one and it made no difference at all. So uh, what I was concluding that sometimes when I was bumping into the cabinet uh, of the computer it just suddenly it started working again. So I came up with the idea that there must be some, so some sort of a soldering issue with the CPU board and uh, chasing an idea from, uh, from YouTube about repairing broken NVIDIA graphics board I came up with the idea that this must also work on the Amiga 1 board. So uh, the setup is like this and uh, when I try turning it on see here, made a little quick fix here and as you can see on the, the screen here, no signal is coming through. It just runs, everything seems to be working fine, but nothing really happens. No, uh, no image on screen. So, uh, and, and one of the, uh, a, a, a common issue with this uh, Amiga 1 board is that the uh, button cell battery located here sometimes fails to, to work. Uh, it fails to make the board uh, boot correctly so exchanging this battery sometimes makes the board work fine uh, but I tried exchanging it and uh, nothing really happened. So uh, what I'm going to show this in this video is, is like I said before based on other videos on fixing uh, broken graphics boards. So uh, what I'm going to do and I've cheated a little bit here uh, and it's very important to make sure that you don't have any electrostatic discharges so take your safety precautions I'm using this uh, wristband uh, connected to the ground level of the motherboard to uh, avoid any electrostatic discharges uh, especially in the winter where I'm located here in Denmark uh, it, in the winter time it's good the humidity, the humidity is very low and that increases the risk of electrostatic discharge so, so please take your precautions. Uh, and I even did a little bit of a pre-work here so what you do is you disconnect all the things here. I'm not going to disconnect the graphics, the graphics board or the, the RAM but uh, I have uh, done a little pre-work and uh, dismounted the CPU module here it says this one and then you take off the the heatsink and you remove the cooling paste from it and then you throw it in the oven now it's important when you place the CPU module in the oven it's very important that you place it in level and that's why I can see I have placed a little bit of foil under the under the CPU module just to make it in level and uh, placing in the oven, you set the oven to 200 degrees Celsius, that's around 385 degrees Fahrenheit and you place it in the oven for 10 minutes. So you can set your clock watch and uh, wait for 10 minutes un un uninterrupted. During the time when the, when the board is in the oven, it, can, it makes, uh, makes the room smell a little bit more like burnt electronics so it's a good thing to uh, turn on your ventilation or maybe open a window or a door to to get rid of the smells. When the board has been in the oven for 10 minutes you simply just turn off the oven and uh, you open it just uh, on a hatch and uh, let it stay there for about uh, half an hour. It's important for the it's important for the electronics that it cools down slowly. It's time to take the CPU board out of the oven. Now it's important here to notice that if any of the component has dropped off, maybe the small uh, capacitors, uh, the resistors, they shouldn't have. Uh, it, it it didn't do it on my module. As you can see on the one side, uh, I have a capacitor that's. Uh, that's that fault that fell off, but that was uh, during the demount 
of the CPU board. So that's really a mechanical error, not, not so much uh, due to the baking process. Well, now that the CPU board has been uh, baked in the oven, it's time to reinstall or remount the heatsink on the CPU itself. It's important to use a little bit of cooling paste, not too much. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about doing that, so I'm not going to show you in this video. Uh, unfortunately, the plastic ribbons that's, uh, that held down the, the heatsink has broken when I was uh, demounting the heatsink, so I used uh, some screws to uh, keep it in place, not too tight, just a little bit to keep the heatsink in place. Uh, and if you have uh, and if you have some, what's it called? Cleaning fluids, uh, this is especially for cleaning uh, connectors on electronics, uh, it's a good idea just to clean the connectors. I've already done this, so there's no point in doing it again. Uh, and I'm not going to use screws to mount on the Amiga 1 board, uh, there's no need to do that. Um, but I, I'm just going to place it in the, so the connector gets full uh, connections. And and place in the, the fan. And then I'm going to reconnect the monitor and reconnect the power supply to the Amiga 1 board. And let's see what happens. Yeah. Now it boots fine again. Of course, there's no hard drive uh, connected to the board, so that doesn't work. But uh, this, uh, the what's it called, the U-boot here shows that the computer is working fine. So uh, it was successful. Uh, on another hand, uh, if the if this doesn't work, if the CPU itself is broken down, I don't think reheating it will solve the issue. You will have to. Uh, Get somebody to do a rework uh, on the on the CPU module. It, it's quite expensive, um, and and I don't know if it's worth it. But uh, on the other hand, the, this computer itself is uh, quite, this this motherboard is quite expensive, and uh, also there's the Amiga Center in France. Uh, I've been using it once uh, to do a repair on a Cyberstorm PVC board, and uh, I was very pleased with our service. Very fast and reliable. Uh, good communications with them and fairly priced too. So I, I can recommend them if, if, if this procedure doesn't work. Uh, and, and of course this is not just for the Amiga 1 CPU board. I guess it would work on other CPU boards. I don't know if it's gonna work on a Cyberstorm or Blizzard card, but it's, it's worth a try. Um, or maybe even a, a PC or Macintosh uh, Linux computer systems. Uh, so, so this is not just for the Amiga. But uh, the, this seems to be working fine on my me and uh, on my computer. And uh, well, thank you for watching.